Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted unto you and then God is going to visit you. We're going to pray. Ezra 6 and verse 14. My apologies, but let me stretch your faith a bit. This is a miracle service. Ezra 6, 14. I'd like us to read together. Are you ready? One to read. And the Jewish elders built it, and they prospered through the prophesy of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo, and they built it and finished it according to the commandment of the God of Israel, So you stop there. The Bible says, no, that's fine. That the men build it and finish, not just because of the resources in their hands. That the reason why they finished was through the prophesying of two prophets. Are we together now? Yeah. Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo. Let me tell you the truth. Ladies and gentlemen, the moment is within your ability, you do not need faith. The assignment of faith is to purchase realities beyond your current ability. We've heard the price. We've heard. We are going to pray. Do you understand? Yeah. There's no reason why that property. My. I hope I'm not interrupting. My sincere apologies, but I just got angry in my spirit. We shouldn't be talking about a marvelous God. Be talking. I know that 500 million. You know, it's a lot of money. But I mean, come on. Even non-believers will not cry. People who don't have, I mean, just from a business sense, we're going to pray and say in the name of Jesus, right where we stand, we receive back that property. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Go ahead. Please pray. Please pray. Someone who believes God, go ahead and pray. Make declarations by faith. The only reason why that property should not enter your hand is if it is not the will of God, but not because of the bankruptcy of financial resources. Is someone declaring? Hallelujah. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, one day you will still have to trust God to build your house. One day you will still have to trust God to train your children. In any case, you cannot run away from this principle. Provided you are alive, you will be confirmed confronted with mountains challenges i i know what i'm saying i'm not a noise maker when it comes to this subject bar just believe that i know what i'm saying hallelujah the lord gave me an instruction last year to organize a crusade using the largest indoor theater in the whole of the united kingdom and not collect offering and feed all the workers hallelujah you, I want you to use your imagination and imagine how much that budget will be. When small auditoriums of 100, 200 people would cost almost 60,000 pounds. So you imagine what it takes. And in UK, most, most auditoriums, except for a few, you will pay even plus the space to set up. So if you are doing one day, you will most likely not just pay for one day. Because the, the, the space you need to set up can be someone's opportunity. How then do you want to become a global voice if you do not have faith? Hallelujah. The Bible says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. He calls it the evidence of things not seen. The truth is that for many great auditoriums that you may want to build as a man of God, 500 million would not build it. The 500 million you are even talking about is just to purchase it. You will still need something else. So take your, your 
break up that 500 million limit no hallelujah except you have been lying about believing God <laughs> did you hear what I said listen even from a business standpoint my apologies I don't mean to embarrass you you can put together 20 business people right now and come up with a strategy to have that property back this is the east we are talking about how bad we are going to get that property in the name of Jesus Christ did you hear what I'm saying don't just say amen and be afraid you will never rise that way no I know what I'm doing I'm on air how else do you want God to trust you with your own property? There are pastors here. One day you will move to your side. How in the world is it going to happen? Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Use every challenge as an opportunity to stretch and build your faith. The God who gave that place before is still alive. The one who even brought us here is still alive. Ladies and gentlemen, did ordinary people not rise from the east today who are billionaires? There was no guarantee for their rising. Some of them trusted God with the sincerity of their heart. Let idol worshippers not have more confidence than us. What then is the excellency of the gospel that we preach? But I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded that he is able... Are we together now? Yes. My apologies if I'm breaking any protocol, but if I don't do this, then I'll be a hypocrite for the remaining part of the miracle service. Because what then are we believing God for? If you cannot trust God for finances, how do you trust cancer to come out of someone's body? That means we're we are playing games here. Is that true? Yeah. I will never preach what I do not believe. I will never stand upon the altar and say something about God that I'm not convinced about. No. I am the first guinea pig to my revelations if it does not work I will not preach it I have seen God come through even in the area of finances are we together now praise the name of the Lord so we're going to pray I'm going to make prophetic declarations there is always a wisdom strategy connected to redemption there is always a wisdom strategy connected to restoration I'm teaching you this so that you will learn if you just get up and say we are going to go and have the property you may not have it even if you have the money what you need to do is to receive a prophetic word and say lord what is the strategy connected to that there is a strategy there is something god is going to say to do hallelujah in truth it's not always about money but god is going to do something i was very touched the kind of humility and open-heartedness it takes for a man of god to do what Reverend Edwin has done. I cannot but back him in this. For a man of God to come sincerely to tell you this is it. This is the love and labor. I understand that for that building, people gave their all. When he was mentioning blood, pastor was echoing and said, truly, the sacrifices of many have gone there. I want to challenge everyone. This is not something I'm used to doing. You know that. But I want to challenge everyone to be part of this. Do your, be, be, do your best be part of history. Don't say what I'm doing or what I'm giving is small. Including me, I'm going to be the first giver here. I will not talk and then not give. Hallelujah. Can I tell you? One million is one plus one plus one plus one plus one plus one. For every one you don't add. You are robbing the opportunity of reaching one million. Are we together now? Everybody here without coercion and without manipulation. Some of you are business people. Some of you have given in certain programs perhaps. Some of you have organized weddings for yourself and for your children to tens of millions. If we believe in this in truth, and I'm saying this also to people who are connected you may not even be part of the house on the rock family but this is the kind of kingdom mentality we are talking about when it has to do with the program of god it's no longer about my church it's about his name <laughs> hallelujah so that also means with all due respect that house on the rock members across other branches who are connecting can be part of this are we together now yes 
it is better let's raise what we can raise like he said then trust God for what wisdom to apply in light of what he can raise hallelujah so let me be the first person to donate a token of 10 million naira for this project hallelujah praise the name of the Lord now listen I'm not I'm not a politician I'm not looking for a political office we are in a serious business of making this happen the truth is that I'm not the only one who can do what I just did and I'm not going to force you but let me challenge you listen listen we do this because we love Jesus Christ and we do this because there is no point coming here to pretend we are not acting hallelujah can we pray one more time and you are going to say Lord I'm not challenging you you may do it now or the Lord may place it in your heart some of you may not have the resources now but you can talk to someone of influence who you know will be more than glad to participate in this my apologies if I violated any protocol my sincere apologies it was just burnt in my spirit there's no reason to come the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is not a weak and beggarly church this is why we teach about kingdom wealth so that at times like this we have individuals that write off this list and then we get into more serious businesses like the business of souls look at the amount of time that it has taken now to challenge people this is what the preaching of the gospel of kingdom prosperity is supposed to do so that these distractions get out of our way and we can focus on doing more serious things hallelujah you are going to pray two prayers our miracle service has started the first is that God will place something in your hand a sacrifice to give the second is that God will turn you into a kingdom financier without pride without the marketing of flesh go ahead and pray these two prayers Lord you can trust me for your name you can trust me go ahead and pray Are we declaring by the Spirit? Father, place something upon my heart by faith. Grant me the grace to be part of this vision. We have spoken by faith. We can take actions of faith by the Spirit of the living God to be part of this, to support House on the Rock Enugu, to support Reverend Edwin and his team, that everything within my power to do to make your name exalted and preserved even as touching this property we obtain grace and then you are praying that it will please the Lord to trust you the purpose of wealth is not for pride it's not for a name the king's business requires resources hallelujah praise the name of the Lord hallelujah the truth is that there are more than 500 people who can bring 1 million it's not a lie there are people who can bring 500,000 there are those who have celebrated birthdays with 5 million and it did not affect them there are people who make profits of 1 million from their shop every day it's true is that am I lying there are people who may not have the money but they have people who honor their word because integrity is also capital and that they can tell someone there is something like this that requires the name of the Lord I'm not putting you under any pressure and by any means we're people of integrity but I am telling you it will take it will take your love for Jesus and faith and participation for this to happen hallelujah there are religions that are the fastest growing in Europe. You know that whilst we were sampling different auditoriums for our conference, we got to certain auditoriums and we found out that most of, you know, a lot of um, Arab nations had bought up the auditoriums. For some of them, they bought it up and they said a Christian program will never happen here again. It's gone, banned forever. May it not be that one day people will use resources to buy our voice and shut it down and then say no more Jesus, 
no more anything buy up schools because believers are not empowered I think the first spirit to cause tonight is the spirit of poverty in the name that is above all names I decree and declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead that this spirit that has impoverished incapacitated believers so that the program of God is not upheld because of lack of resources so that people fear of the path of integrity because they are trying to make ends meet financially I command that spirit to depart from your life now I command that spirit to depart from your life now I command that spirit to depart from your life now in the name of Jesus Christ so before we get to sit down please let me challenge you as God has placed in your heart we are a body of believers together all those in the overflow students can do something workers can do something business people can do something okay praise the Lord so I'm told that there are ushers who have sleeps in fact the truth is that responsible Christianity with understanding they should not be looking for who has sleeps are we together now I'm not breaking protocols but when you understand the kingdom dimension it's not it's just that of course we live in a world where you don't pray on people's right but if you really know God and understand his ways are we together now yes So you can feel free collect the slip from the ushers. some of you may need to send whatever you have and some of you may probably want to see Reverend after service perhaps God has placed it in your hand to do something significant or someone has given a seed of 20 million I'm, I'm told hallelujah. praise the name of the Lord now hallelujah my assignment here my assignment here my assignment here is to do the miracle service but I am just telling you that faith works cause the spirit of fear from your life are we together now yes cause the spirit of fear and let me challenge you if you don't have money don't fight those who preach the gospel of kingdom world with integrity because you will be causing trouble for the body if you don't have the resources to give them respect those who have the courage to guide the body of Christ and help them to be prosperous in the name of Jesus Christ are we learning all right let's lift our hands let's get back to our business tonight Lord we thank you Lord we thank you go ahead and thank him for the miracle service tonight thank him for what he's already doing I believe that this is even a miracle itself Blessed be the name of the Lord, Hosanna to the King of Kings, Hosanna to the Lord of Lords. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, your name alone is to be praised. Ask him for an encounter tonight, even by the Spirit of the Living God. Ask him for an encounter tonight, even by the Spirit of the Living God. Father, this sickness will not remain with me at the end of this service. This oppression, this mountain that stands before me, I am about to soar, soar above every mountain, above every limitation. Are we still praying? For in Jesus' mighty and matchless name we have prayed. Father, tonight we pray that you will move upon us in such a mighty way. Move upon our lives and let us celebrate your hand. Let us celebrate your presence. We thank you, O God of heaven, because testimonies will abound after this meeting. And to Jesus be all the glory. Amen and amen. Please be seated for a few minutes. Please be seated for a few minutes. Thank you again, Reverend Edwin. Thank you for this opportunity. And thank you, Enugu, for granting me this opportunity to speak. Um, yesterday, we began our teaching considering the subject Emmanuel. And we considered, in, under part one, the evidence of his presence. That there are certain attesting signs that follow a man who has encountered the God of heaven, the God of the Bible. 
and among the many many evidences we said the chiefest of them all is a broken and a contrite spirit hallelujah that the highest proof you have met god is not anointing is not revelation is brokenness genuine brokenness genuine brokenness are we together genuine brokenness you can fake anointing unfortunately you can fake all other experiences but you cannot fake a genuinely break, broken heart the bible says a broken and a contrite heart oh god thou will not despise and we took our time yesterday to say when god comes to you he does not always come just to give there are times that he comes to take my son give me your heart and let your ears be attentive or inclined unto my ways and so i want to take the second part as a charge very quickly and then we trust god for grace and as always whilst you are seated in this atmosphere for those within this beautiful auditorium and the many who are outside i want you to release your faith and believe that many things will be happening to you whilst you are listening hallelujah expect anything that is not consistent with god's intent in your life to give way tonight and that includes your family the man of god who came here to introduce reverend made a profound statement if i recall he said the lord sent a word to jacob and it lightened upon israel that means you can be here representing your family they may not be here but that everything god is doing in your life are we together now can affect them kilometers away from here you believe that shout a believing amen. amen amen so i want to teach part two emmanuel we're looking at part two as a miracle service and we're looking at the blessings of his presence the blessings of his presence there are blessings that follow the presence of god when god decides to walk with a man when god decides to back a man there are blessings that follow that man the blessings of his presence the bible is full of instances where god decided to back men where god decided to support men with his presence his power his glory the bible is full of moments where ordinary men accomplished supernatural extraordinary results and they credited those feats to the presence of God not just their ability hallelujah for instance the nation of Israel was noted for achieving and accomplishing great triumphs and every time they probed into the source of their strength they found out that it was the presence of God represented in the Ark of the Covenant that every time they carried the Ark of the Covenant they would defeat any nation no matter how powerful no matter how dexterous to the point that when you read in scripture every time they wanted to attack the nation of israel they would want to look out for the ark so that they would seize and capture the ark because even the heathens had learned that there was something about the presence of god one time a prophet was called to curse god's people and when he stood to invoke powers to curse god's people he said these people have been blessed there is nothing i can do because he saw that there was a formation the ark of god being at the center of them and he said the people have been blessed and i cannot curse them because the shout of a king is in the midst of them may that be your testimony that when you understand the blessedness of god's presence it is an immunity against the vicissitudes of life that no man unassisted by God has any advantage the truth is that in light of the realities that are captured within the realm of the spirit no man unassisted by God has any sustainable advantage any spirit can pray upon your life and your destiny at the instance of their will it takes the presence of God to define our levels of invincibility as far as the earth is concerned there are people for instance who made a boast of the financial resources that they had and in a moment one sickness one tragedy and everything just disappeared without the help of god man as his best is still limited is still frail and is still helpless are we together now 
so that we will understand the value of his presence the value of the presence of God is beyond just being a Christian no there are blessings that follow people who pay the price to be carriers of his presence and as a charge I'm just going to list six of these blessings there are many more but I just thought to capture these six and then it ushers us into the miracle service are we ready number one the first blessing that comes with his presence is called the fullness of joy please write it down and please give us Psalm 16 and verse 11 the fullness of joy thou will show me the path of life Psalm 16 and 11 says in thy presence in thy presence is the fullness of joy and then it says at thy right hand there are pleasures forever fullness of joy joy is beyond happiness like you may have been taught happiness is circumstantial if you receive an alert you can be happy based on that that your mind perceives to be a good news but joy is the ability to remain cheerful under all and any circumstance because of a revelation of who God is not just your circumstances are we together now yes in his presence is fullness of joy we live in a world that is largely full of sadness and gloominess you find out that there are people who are literally depressed today because of certain things that may have happened around their lives but then you find others who are cheerful and you are tempted to ask do you ever have issues until the person tells you this person who is laughing has been trusting God for the fruit of the womb for 17 years and I still do not have a child yet the person is that one is no longer happiness they have tapped into a supply that only his presence can bring can I tell you when you see people rejoicing in the Lord it's not because all their problems are solved in fact compared to what you call problems they will rejoice if that were all that they had hallelujah I've had the opportunity of counseling people who you know would you will expect them to be grieving over their loved ones who just transited and while you meet with them they are the ones who will counsel you and be encouraging you they'll say well the Bible is, is true God is faithful I know my loved one is in heaven and you who is the visitor is crying and cannot contain yourself and they are encouraging you and you are wondering from whence cometh this strength It's called joy I hope you know that joy is beyond just a quality of delight and pleasantness it's an energy in the spirit it gives you the staying power through pain and through unfavorable circumstances if you do not have joy you may not last until your testimony emerges the presence of God can bring joy the presence of God can bring joy there are people who are ever joyful rejoicing it does not even when they are crying they still say no problem I know that God is faithful may that be your testimony from today Amen. that everybody will see you and say it's like you you've, you've gotten a job now and say no the job is not here so what changed why the laughter why the merriment why the celebration and you tell them I came for SOAR conference and among the many graces I received is the grace that causes men to rejoice my Bible your Bible says rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice there are many people who are depressed today you look at them and there's gloominess and sadness what happened they will tell you I know that I was holding 2,000 naira. I can't find it and yet for one week they are moving around suspecting cursing everybody looking for a scripture and said that money must come out is my sweat you need joy more than restoration you need joy are we together now yes sir you need joy you need joy in this wicked world you need joy someone can look at you and insult you and say you will never rise in this office and rather than remaining in a state of gloominess let them see the value of the presence of God that you carry sometimes they may even give you a sack letter and I'm not saying it will come it will be rosy but joy is beyond this is dominion over pain 
dominion over unfavorable situations that is the assignment of joy to elevate you to a realm where the vicissitudes of life have no power over you do you believe this the joy of the Lord brands a believer in such a phenomenal way that even in the midst of your pain you still comfort others you are going through the same thing they are going through but you have mastered the art of forgetting your own pain and you are focused on their own joy hallelujah say I will rejoice go ahead say I will rejoice you wake up in the morning and it's true that there might not be anything for you to eat you wake up in the morning and the bills are piling the rent is there as a man of God you are wondering where do I get the money to pay for this auditorium listen to me sadness is not a contributor so why entertain it sadness does not contribute to anything the issue is already there by the way so you rejoice you rejoice you rejoice you rejoice in the Lord father thank you i may not know my way out but i trust you because you are that way you are that door hallelujah the presence of god gives us the opportunity to experience the blessings of the fullness of joy can we continue number two very quickly the second blessing that only his presence can bring is true success and favor notice my expression true success because there is false or bad success true success and favor is a product of his presence genesis chapter 39 we'll read from verse 1 to 4 genesis 39 follow closely as i read please and joseph was brought down to egypt watch this and Potiphar remember he was sold by his brothers now I don't know about you but can you imagine the kind of pain that your brothers blood brothers transacted business out of their own brother and said take him it doesn't matter use him as a slave if he dies in the process that's all and the Bible says they brought him down to Egypt and Potiphar an officer of Pharaoh a captain of the guard an Egyptian brought him bought him off the hands of the ishmaelites which brought him down teeth verse 2 hallelujah and the lord was with joseph and the lord was with joseph and he was a prosperous man it's not your condition it is whether god is with you or not that a man as a slave god still says he's a prosperous man even in Egypt and he was in the house of his master the Egyptian verse 3 and his master saw that the Lord was with him so men can see that the Lord is with you and that the Lord had made all that he did to prosper in his hand as a result Joseph found grace or favor in his sight and he served him and he made him overseer over his house and all that he had put in his hand there is a profound blessing that the presence of God brings it brings true success regardless the current situation and it brings you into the realm of favor favor compels men to be willing to participate in your life and in your success you've heard me say it many times that who hates you does not matter but who likes you matters believe me you need a support structure around your life to rise to soar to excel and the bible tells us that the presence of god among the many things it can bring to a believer the presence of god can bring favor it is true the presence of God can bring favor it can make men like you and someone just gets up and says you know what for your two children please let me sponsor them until university and the reason is that I like you may that be your testimony yeah. the same way if you do not have the favor of God someone will look at you and say I hate you and I'm determined to make you cry under my watch I must insist that you cry say God forbid one more time the favor of God 
I made up my mind when I saw the value of favor that whatever it will take is a risk to live in this day without the favor of God in your life. It's a risk. Our world today is marred with all kinds of sentiments and all kinds of prejudices. It is favor that defines your possibilities and brands you, stands you out in the midst of a wicked and bedeviled world. Say favor. Your tribesmen can like you, but how about other people across the globe? You can get to a land where people hate you for no reason, but not when the favor of God is upon you. Even if you were sold by the Ishmaelites to Pharaoh, the favor of God will compel Pharaoh to like you. I hope you know that it matters who likes you. Listen, Joseph interpreted three people's dreams, sir. He interpreted the dream of the baker, there was no reward because the baker had no influence he interpreted the dream of the wine presser not much was done but when he interpreted pharaoh's dream he came out of prison immediately when god wants to help you he will place something upon your life that can solve the problem of the person who has the key to the prison hallelujah favor the presence of god was with joseph regardless what happened to joseph that presence factor remained with him and he had true success and he had favor number three the third blessing of god's presence in fact let me still recap on number two i'm, I'm drawn to a scripture right now coming to my spirit that should be second samuel please please look for it for us second samuel 6 i believe from verse 10 to 12 this is the story of the ark of God in the house of a man called Obed Edom. Did I get that right? Yes. The Bible says, watch this. So David would not remove the ark of the Lord unto him into the city of David. When Uzzah died now, remember? But David carried it aside and took the ark that represented the presence of God into the house of a man called Obed Edom the Gittite. Verse 11. And the ark of the Lord continued in the house of Obed Edom the Gittite for how long? Three months, 90 days. And the Lord blessed Obed Edom and all his household. Why? Because the ark found its way in his house. 12. And it was told King David. Can you imagine that level of blessing? News got to King David saying, The Lord had blessed the house of Obed Edom. And all that pertained unto him because of the ark of the Lord. So David said, ah, carry that ark from that place. David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom into the city of David with gladness. That the ark was just kept there. And I'm sure the man would go out in the morning and people would say, there's something about you. Are you hungry? Can I help you? Can I help your children? What is upon you is what controls what is around you. And the presence of God can secure that in your life. When the Bible says God blessed him and all that he had, use your imagination like a movie producer. Describe for me the life of such a man. What would happen if he left home in the morning? He would return with joy and with singing. What will happen to his enemies? What will happen to his friends? The presence of God, the ark of the Lord in the house. A man decided to donate his house. That means if your life becomes like the house of Obed Edom and you can allow that ark to find expression within and around your life, Obed Edom's reality begins to be replicated in your life. Do you believe that? The presence of God the presence of God the presence of God number three what is the third blessing of his presence are we learning already protection and preservation I like this one because it connects to the miracle service please pay attention the third blessing that comes with his presence is protection and preservation popular scripture psalm 23 mm. hallelujah i love the bible 
please don't hate the bible you will suffer love the bible love the word of god therein lies the wisdom that makes great in the kingdom psalm 23 let's look at it the lord is my shepherd he never said the lord is my savior the lord is my shepherd i shall not want he's many other things but in this instance he's my shepherd i shall not want as a result number two the bible says he maketh me to lie down in green pastures he leaded me beside the still waters three he restored my soul he leaded me in the path of righteousness and he does that for his name's sake next verse please look at this yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death please help me read i will fear no evil why thank you very much the reason why he would not fear evil is not because he's come out of the darkness even whilst he's there he's conscious of divine presence there were two both instances in the bible that have very striking messages two people were about to face calamity as a result of the boats that they were in but the presence that they secured defined their liberty or their loss the first instance was the man called jonah jonah was in a ship are we together now with businessmen who had come to transact business and because of a negative presence in that ship they started losing their properties they were almost losing their life until he suggested himself that they threw him out of the ship the same boat was on his way going to the land of the gatherings and then the bible says there rose a boisterous storm of wind is that in your bible and then the same storm would have destroyed them but in this time it was jesus who was in the boat jesus was in the boat and even though he was asleep they found comfort knowing that if they did not know how to do anything about about the storms and the wind they could wake jesus and that divine presence secured them they would have died for nothing the bible says he rose up and he said peace be still hallelujah sometimes it is not just in coming out of the challenge that you find joy and peace and drive away fear it is in verifying that god is with you that i know that i'm in the midst of this boisterous storm and if i have that consciousness of divine presence though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death he says i fear no evil for thou art with me he says your rod and your staff they comfort me then he says thou preparest a table before me even in the presence of mine enemies you anoint my head with oil and my cup runs over as a result of your presence he says goodness help me verse 6 goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord hallelujah do you believe that divine presence let me show you two more scriptures I hope God is speaking to someone already in Daniel chapter 3 from verse 19 to 30 we may not have the time to read the full text for the sake of time but you just write it Daniel chapter 3 19 to 30 the story is that Nebuchadnezzar built a statue remember of 90 feet pure gold and an instruction was given that at the sound of musical instruments everyone would bow and worship that image and there were three Hebrew boys Shadrach Meshach and Abednego who refused that they would not bow to that golden statue they were given a chance and they still insisted and in anger Nebuchadnezzar mandated that the fiery furnace be made seven times hotter the Bible says to the point that those who threw them inside were even burned by the fire but I like what the Bible says afterwards that as soon as they got into the fire the number changed they were no longer three the question is that you see do not think they only became four in the fire they were always four they were always four the fire only revealed the fourth person when there is no fire you will not know yes sir do you believe what you are hearing no. if the fourth man just arrived here to be too late 
because the Bible says those who threw the people died by the time they got in there no chains again and the Bible says they were walking freely Nebuchadnezzar looks and says am I seeing well were there not three men who were thrown there but I see the image of the fourth like the son of God and then he called them he said these Hebrew boys and the Bible says something very profound he says men who the fire had no power over men who the fire had no power over and the simple reason was because of the presence of the fourth man as a result Nebuchadnezzar signed a decree by himself all over the land of Babylon that if any man were caught insulting the God of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego they would be cut into pieces for there is none that can save in such a manner divine presence divine presence oh there are arrows that fly by day my dear people there are noisome pestilences that waste there are destructions that waste in noonday and trying to learn all of them for your immunity is a burden that is unnecessary you all you need to do is to be sure that his presence is with you it is only when we get to heaven i will know how many shrines have my names on them today if you were the devil will you like me be honest only God knows who is invoking something now and say after preaching at the SOAR conference may this man not wake up tomorrow unfortunately I will wake up do you know why it's not because my name is Joshua Selman my immunity is found in Psalm 3 I lay me down and I slept he said I wait for the Lord sustain me The herbalist who wants to kill you will also fall asleep. And he should better believe in God to wake him up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Protection. This world is a wicked world though come to terms with it the Bible says the whole world lieth in wickedness Jeremiah chapter 20 10 and 11 the Lord showed me this scripture years ago and it comforted me so deeply and I want you to look at this scripture and never forget it for the rest of your life I wish that we could read 10 and 11 can we read together one to read for I heard the defaming of many fear on every side report they say and we will report it all my familiars watch for my halting saying per adventure he will be enticed and we will prevail against him and we shall take our revenge on him next verse but the lord is with me as a mighty terrible one therefore my persecutors shall stumble they shall not prevail they shall be greatly ashamed for they shall not prosper their everlasting confusion shall never be forgotten what gives you confidence listen what gives you confidence in this scripture in, in this kingdom is that you surround your life with truths like this but the Lord is with me as a mighty terrible one the Lord is with me like that lion not just like a lamb a mighty terrible one like a man who come and stand before his wife and say who has made her cry uh -huh. who has made her cry she may be weak but don't you play with the wife and you stand as the bride of Christ defended by the jealousy of your husband hallelujah the Bible says jealousy is the rage of a man you want to know how angry a man can be touched the wife that he loves Sila 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 let's continue we have I mean it's it's not for me tonight this is a miracle service are we together listen 
if you know how much Jesus loves you and how much he's determined to defend your stay and your excelling fear will die hallelujah but he stands by me I may be weak I may not have any advantage physically speaking but he stands by me as a mighty terrible one a mighty David knew this when he stood before Goliath Goliath said am I a dog look at this boy Israel you came to distress you want me to kill this boy in a way that will make all other children be afraid and David said are you done talking you come to me with your bows and your spears but I come to you in a name I believe in God oh I truly do I believe in God do you believe in God yeah. Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 10 Jesus take it high for me Emmanuel Jesus Christ you never let me go My shepherd king, you're watching over me, Emmanuel, Emmanuel, Jesus Christ, you never let me go. That's what the consciousness of his presence would do. My shepherd king, you're watching over me, Emmanuel. Isaiah 8 and verse 10. Please give it to us. Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 10. Take counsel together and it shall come to naught. Speak the word like an incantation and it shall not stand. Why? I'm showing you this as scriptures from my secret place take counsel call the name invoke the altar waste your time while you are doing that he stands by me listen if you don't know this I can tell you sincerely the evil that has befallen our days will catch up with you that you are setting people free every day Casting out devils, healing the sick, depopulating hell. Oh no, come on. You need to stand upon something. Let me show you that scripture again. 8, 10, Isaiah. Take counsel together. It shall not stand. Speak the word. This is not confessional. No. This is like an incantation. Joshua Selman, where are you? As you wake up tomorrow, make sure you are paralyzed. It shall not stand. Why? For God is with us. Say it again. For God. One more time. Hallelujah. Oh, I will not fear. No. I will not fear. I will not fear. I will not fear I reject fear this is a miracle service for someone I reject fear in the name of Jesus the son of the living God take counsel and it will not stand speak the word and it shall not stand because Emmanuel God is with me God is with me God is with me you believe that number four the fourth blessing of his presence is called rest Exodus 33, 12 to 14. Am I wasting your time? Rest. Rest. I will soar with you above. Father, you are king over the flood. And I will be still and know you are God. My I will be with you and know you. 
prophesy to us. I will be still. I will be still and know you are God. I will be still and know you are God. Exodus 33, 12 to 14. Ladies and gentlemen, there is rest that comes with his presence in the midst of this turbulent world. Moses said unto the Lord, See, thou sayest unto me, Bring up this people, and thou hast not let me see whom thou wilt send with me. He said, Yet thou say, I know thee by name, and thou hast found grace in my sight. 13. Now I pray thee, if I have found grace in your sight, did I what scripture did I give you? That I may find grace consider that these are your people 14 I hope that I got that right yes my presence shall go with thee and I will give thee I began to talk about rest yesterday that in physics we define rest as a state where there is no motion no distance is being covered with time that is science definition of rest but in the kingdom rest means you have entered your Sabbath hallelujah rest is what happened to jesus when he was done defeating hell death the grave and he sat at the right hand of the father rest rest god can give a man rest in matthew 11 i believe verse 28 i hope i got i got that right please give it to us jesus was speaking and he said come unto me matthew 11 28 yes come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and i will give you rest rest from struggles rest from all kinds of pain rest from fear our world is full of you find people literally palpitating over everything because they do not know what lies tomorrow i want you to know that in his presence you can find rest i may not have everything in control now but i know that he's in control and so i find rest say my soul find rest one more time say my soul find rest for the last time say my soul find rest man of god reject high blood pressure ministry will not kill you find rest say amen Businessman, find rest. You need a loan of three billion naira. Find rest. It's only when you are alive that you will transact business. Find rest. Are we together? Rest is not nonchalance. It's a state where you are quiet because you are aware that God is working. The keeper of Israel neither sleeps nor slumbers. If he's awake and I'm also awake out of fear, then I'm wasting the potential of his presence. If I'm awake, I should be walking. If I'm not, I should be asleep. He watches over me. He's that meticulous over my destiny. Rest. Are we learning? So number one, the fullness of joy. Number two, success and favor. Number three, protection and preservation number four rest can i give you the last two the fifth blessing of his presence is called transformation second corinthians 3 17 and 18 transformation every time we encounter him we cease being our current versions we move to higher and even more superior versions please give it to us now the lord is that spirit the bible says and where the spirit of the lord is help me there is liberty but we all so how many people can be part of this blessing all 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 including your children your children's children we all it says with open face beholding us in a glass the glory of the lord the Bible says, are changed, are changed, are changed, transformed into the image of God from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of God. Let a weak person stay in his presence and weakness dries up 
you will see a strong person come let a fearful person stay in his presence listen to me the rod of Aaron that was not connected to the earth in the presence of God is still bothered it changed states you've been here right from yesterday it means that at the end of this conference something should happen to you when Moses stayed in the presence of God for that long when he returned he did not even know that his face was glowing the nation of Israel could not behold him and they said no no he had to cover his face transformation of your mind transformation the quality of your life and your destiny changes in his presence let me tell you a little story many years ago I'd never never entered a plane an aircraft in my life prior to that time and I sat down one time outside and I was looking and there was an airplane that was moving and I was just blessing the Lord and I remember the Lord speaking to me and he says my word will put you in that plane every time I fly today I have memories of those days and I said can you imagine if God can take you from the ground to the sky he can take you from the pit to your destiny are we together yes there is nothing that God cannot do if you believe him hallelujah transformation that means a poor you can become a wealthy you courtesy his presence an unanointed you can become a marvelously anointed you courtesy his presence a sick you can become a healthy you courtesy his presence a spiritually ignorant you can become one who is full of light courtesy his presence the presence of God brings transformation let me give you the last are you ready the presence of God guarantees the supernatural this is the sixth blessing of his presence you want to walk in the supernatural you want to witness and experience the supernatural genuine supernatural manifestations cannot be outside of his presence mark 16 19 and 20. let's read together mark 16 19 and 20. so then after the lord had spoken to them he was received up into heaven and sat at the right hand of god verse 20 and they went forth and preached everywhere the lord walking with them and confirming the word with signs following do you believe that the Lord walking with Joshua Selman if the Lord is not with us probably they would have beaten us in some of the nations we have visited you go there in the name of the Lord and have the audacity to say the sick will be healed verify that God is with you reminds me of Acts 10 38 how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power and the Bible says he went about doing good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil please read the last sentence for me for God was with him for God was with him commanding signs and wonders through his life like it will begin to happen to you after tonight strange manifestations of signs and wonders i hope you know that signs and wonders are not left for pastors and apostles and preachers no he said for this promise is unto you and to your children your children's children as many as are far off even as many as the lord himself will call it is the heritage of every believer to walk in signs and wonders we are gathered here tonight in his presence again ready to experience all kinds of breakthroughs there are people here tonight among the thousands of people gathered across this auditorium and around some are sick in their bodies there are some who have death sentences literally did you know the thing about sickness is that sometimes it never shows on the victim you can see someone looking healthy whereas medical report tells you there are only two weeks left to live by the privilege of what I do, I've had the honor of ministering to people and sometimes I marvel at how people have to endure so much pain. How about oppression? 
there are people who get up in the morning and they know they will return with trouble because of the kinds of spirit influences that are around their life hallelujah all kinds of wrong things happen with them they look at you somewhere and say you look like the arm robber that just told follow us to the police station why must it be me i came out in peace to buy groceries and i suddenly look like an arm robber are we together listen let me tell you i don't mean to scare you but if god does not come to immune you with his presence there is no limit to the episodes of pain that you go through courtesy wicked spirits they will program all kinds and all shades of pain in your life hallelujah but now thanks be to god which causes us always to triumph that's what your bible says are we together now yes how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, it says, with the Holy Ghost and with power. He went about doing good, and the Bible says, healing not they that were sick, they that were oppressed of the devil. I've been oppressed before. I know what it means to be oppressed. It has no regard for gender, has no regard for your intellectual, you know, sacrifice. There are people seated right now, they cannot breathe. There are those who, if they, if they don't use some kind of aid, they may die in their sleep. How can that be the will of God? No, sir. There are families, as soon as God brings certain blessings, sicknesses and all kinds of tragedies now begin to come. One million every week, two million every week until they are impoverished. They sell their homes, they sell everything. This is why we are gathered here tonight. How about those who perpetually stand before closed doors and it looks like doors never open? They experience all kinds of satanic delays. How do you know you are going through delay when the only thing that grows in your life is your age? According to God's design, everything should grow. If your age is the only thing that is growing, you need help. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.